Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm covering 90 Day Fiance, season 7, episode 5. Um, I thought this episode was a little bit boring in the second half. Um, I found myself to be on my phone a lot. I hope we don't keep running through the same problems because I could already tell it's going to get boring real, real quick and we have at least at least probably seven or eight episodes to go for this season and I don't think I can um, torture myself for that many weeks watching people complain about the same thing over and over again. So, with that being said, let's go to our first couple. It's Anna and Marcel. Um, I'm kind of tired of them. I'm tired of the, the the texting type of thing. I feel like these people don't know each other. Not even based on time, but just communication. They can't talk to each other. I don't know if Marcel is learning English or is she learning or is um, Anna learning. Turkish, but they cannot communicate, and it's like really, really stressful. She's also doubting herself and whether she should go through this, go through with the marriage. I don't see the love. I see like them as friends, as like friends that have a common interest. Um, I don't even see them as good friends. I never see them kind of look like a couple. They they kind of look like roommates. Um, her kids are still very very unhappy with the situation which I can understand from their point of view but no need to be calling Marcel names and stuff like this and this is something you need to take up with your mom and tell her how you feel and Anna should give it more time um, I don't understand how they were able to communicate long distance and they didn't speak um, their language but I don't know, um, I just don't see it really working or maybe I'm missing um, the love they have for each other because I'm just not seeing it. So anyways, let's look at them. So let's go to Michael and Juliana. This episode is like the first time that while I was watching it I was thinking like, Juliana, you, I could see you as a sugar baby. Um, I understand that she comes from a place that is um, poverty ridden, ridden, if that's a word, um, lots of poverty, um, she's looking for a better life, and um, she was kind of in her feelings that Michael got upset that she decided to buy a car on his credit card. Him giving you access to the card was not for you to kind of spend it on whatever and um, whenever you want. This card was supposed to be to kind of help you get by and it looked like you took advantage of him. Michael also, she bought that card for her family. She did not buy that card for you. This whole like, oh, she didn't know she was leaving and stuff like that. She was going to buy that card regardless if she was leaving or she's not. But that card is for her family. Um, but I don't know what she expected him to to um, say. Like, obviously, if someone's buying a car on my credit card that I gave them to maybe buy food and clothes and pay rent, that's a different type of expense. So they're moving into a new house and they go furniture shopping. Well, this big furniture store, I, based on what I saw, some furniture looks very, very nice. She goes and picks out a furniture that looks like it's dirty. It looks like it's been, it's been in someone's house for, for 20 years and they, they threw it out and these people are repurposing it to sell it. She picked the ugliest couch in the store. So the girl, so my lady is like, so that's gonna be fourteen thousand. And she's like, okay, like I feel like at that point it looks like you're taking advantage of Michael. And Michael is dumb, but I don't think he's that dumb. And I feel like it kind of hurts not kinda of hurts him, but it kinda of affects him when she acts like that because 
she she claims that he's mean, but he's not mean when he doesn't want to spend all his money on stupidness. And I don't think she understands the value of an American dollar. And I think once she gets to understand that, um, which would entail getting to know finances and stuff like that, she'll understand that. You can't be spending $14,000 on a couch, especially a couch like that, and a couch that looks so dirty like that. While I was also watching her interact with the kids, I don't know why I thought, like, she really looks like a nanny. She doesn't really look like Michael's fiance. She just looks like a nanny. Anyways, so let's go to Tanya and Sinjin. So, um, Sinjin is taking Tanya, Sinjin. Tanya is taking Sinjin to go meet her family for some kind of like family get together and he's nervous understandably and um, Tanya could have looked a little bit more you know put together she looked like she's she went to go do groceries and went to a plotty class and it's like okay let me just, um, just hop in the car and drive over like kind of look a little bit more put together especially when you're on on TV we already know how some some um, segments are scripted and unnatural, so putting yourself together would have been fine. He meets her her kind of her full family. I'm loving the grandma, um, but it gets back to the oh my god they she's pushing kids on him again, having him hold the baby, her family like mentioning having kids and stuff like this. If I'm your girl and I know you're uncomfortable with this, I would kind of be like, yo guys chill, like we're just trying we're just trying to get married and and settle down first, you know? I felt like she was totally like giving into like and egging on her family. So that happened and then the bombshell that we knew were gonna happen because we watched the, the preview beforehand she is now off to Costa Rica for three weeks on this herbal expedition thing to learn about herbal medicine and stuff like that. Which I'm just like, this is, their segment is now 60 day fiance. It's no longer 90 days. She has to leave him because he cannot leave the country with strangers because even though he's met her mother before he doesn't know her mother like that he has no friends to go to to keep his company and stuff because he cannot work so what is he supposed to do with himself i felt like that was kind of a selfish move on her point on her part because you had all the time in the world to do this i understand other opportunities came along and you couldn't do this this is another opportunity that came along that w that would enable you to hold off on it again. You're getting married to the love of your life, supposedly. But, I don't know. I understand this is supposed to be for their future or whatnot, but it seemed pretty selfish for her to just kind of pick up and leave him for for three weeks. Especially is because especially because she could have done this maybe after they got married, maybe next year. Like, figure it out another time. I highly doubt like this specific program only runs for this specific time and then that's it. Oh my god. Anyways, so let's move on to Emily and Sasha. There wasn't much with them. You find out is six months has gone by. Because David, their little baby David, is now like a full-on, full-on baby. Facial expressions, everything. And Emily is mad at Sasha because they're still in Russia. She wants to go home. And because he delayed putting in for his passport, they delayed giving it to, him, um, to them. So then the bombshell with them, we find out, no shocker here, that Sasha is barely spending time with his son. And when you say barely spending time, you would think maybe, maybe he's with him for maybe three hours for the day. Maybe he comes home at like seven and then just 11. He maybe, he's up for maybe a night, uh, a night, uh, I don't call it like session, but like when the baby's up at the night, in the night, he's maybe there, but no. 
He on average spends five hours a week with his child, which is basically a lunch break for me. A lunch break from Monday to Friday, which is nothing. Which You have 24 hours of the day and there's only one hour spent with your child? Like I assume, no shocker there. I can understand that he lives in a different type of culture where the woman does stuff and he is the, the provider, but like you also need to be there because it's no, don't bother provide for me if you don't want to even be there for me either. What am I going to do with money? Money is not going to give me love. Money is not going to make me um, become a good person. Money will, money is good, don't get me wrong, but spending an hour, like I spend more time with my coworkers, more time with my boss, like that's nothing and he should have really kind of stepped up. Um, so that's really shitty of him. <laughs> so next we have Robert and Annie. So they are still bickering about the ex's situation. Um, then they go to a boxing ring and bitch about the same situation. I don't understand um, what else happened. They still seem very hostile towards each other. They're 0 to 100 real quick. Attitude, they're petty. Um, and I don't know, like, I don't understand, I don't understand their love. I don't understand meeting someone for 8 hours and... I can understand maybe having lust for somebody, but that's one day of knowing somebody. Yeah, anyone can have lust for somebody, but enough to be like, marry me. Especially because of how prominent Annie's attitude is and how prominent Robert's attitude is. Meeting someone for eight hours, you're not, you're not going to be in an attitude. You're going to be happy and all this stuff. So I can understand why you would be happy to be around that person, but it's only eight hours. Like, that's a work day for me. A work day long, and I'm just a work old day. I'm supposed to be with you during my working hours and then determine that you're the one for me. At this point, I feel like Robert's looking for a glorified babysitter that he can have sex with um, regularly. I don't see the love there. They have so much issues and so much problems, which is understandable for someone who's only met the other person for eight hours. So, that's it with them. Okay, so next we have Mike and Natalie. Um, I'm getting sick and tired of them already. Uh, they keep emphasizing that Natalie wants to have a baby. Mike does not want to. Mike does not want to for a multitude of reasons. One being he's in debt. Two, he'd like to settle down first and actually get married. And three, he'd like to be in America for all this. Natalie um, realizes that she's older and that she wants what her first marriage didn't give her, is that family. And, I don't know, it's been brought up so many times and like... Unless you're gonna, like, trap him, he's not having a kid, so <laughs> you need to discuss when is gonna, ha when do you feel comfortable, um, to start, uh, trying. Because this whole, like, all I want once now and I'll be pregnant in Ukraine, then I'll come over to the state, like, no one has time for that, no one wants to do that, that's not a good plan. I think that... They need to have an adult conversation about this and discuss, like, within two years, I want to get you pregnant, or I want us to have a baby, or I want us to fix this, this friggin' debt so I can have a child with you. Um, and then they're also bringing up her ex-husband, like, as Annie says, the past is the past, you should need to erase that stuff. Stop bringing up her ex, she's not with her ex, she's with you. So, that's it for them. And then last but not least, we have Blake and Jasmine. This is one of my uh, funnier couples. So, it's the next day, and uh, Blake has invited his friends to meet Jasmine in the hotel pool area. And, like, everything seems nice. Like, they seem like really good, f like, friends. They didn't come off as, like... Well, what are you doing here? Type of thing. They seem like gen 
not genuinely because I don't know them, but they seemed like they were being very nice, asking her very um, on the surface level question, nothing too deep. But she didn't seem like she wanted to be there. She didn't seem like... It's one of those... I got one of those vibes where you come there, you see how everything is, and then like an hour later you're like, okay, I just wanted to drop in. I have like some prior engagements to go to. How do you guys have fun? Like, it seemed like that kind of vibe. Um, I can, like, I can tell that you're not like Blake, which is fine, but you didn't even seem like you wanted to be there or meet his friends. Um, she doesn't drink, which, who cares, but just because you don't drink doesn't mean everybody should not drink. Whether your reasons are valid or not, um, as to why you don't drink, that's on you. Um, I thought it was also really rude that she was like, once it, like maybe there for an hour, is like, oh, I'm not feeling good, so I'm gonna go lie down. I really think she should have um, just um, tough. I'd say toughen it out. I guess toughen it out, and just stuck through it, um, even if she wasn't feeling good. Because I know this girl did not sleep or nothing. This girl was sitting on the bed on her phone, not doing anything. She seems like... She's one of those people who are okay to be alone, which is fine, but... <laughs> you are engaged, you move to a new country, you don't know anyone there, aside from your sister. You think you want to get a little bit more situated. It seems like she's very, like, standoffish. Um, so, and also, they went to go eat, and he's kind of asking her about the situ about their situation, how, what did he, th what does she think of his friends and stuff like this, and she's like, I prefer not to talk while I'm eating. We can talk later. And I'm like, does she like <laughs> Does she like him? Does she really like him? I'm convinced that like she's tolerating him or she's putting up with him. I don't really think that they like that at least she likes him that way. Um I remember she saying like uh she didn't drink alcohol cuz she didn't want to put like toxins or poisons in her body and I'm like but you put silicone in your body though. Um but that was just me being shady. Um I would be, like, she needs to convince me that she likes this man, because she's treating this man like, like, he's cool and all, but, you know, I have other options type of thing, and I feel like he's just, like, over the moon with her, and he's not reading her personality, or he's making excuses, um, but, yeah, a little, little bit strange, those two. But that is my recap of 90 Day Fiancé Season 7, Episode 5. Next week we have Angela and Michael. Thank the Lord. I can't wait for next week. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. A dumb cop, fucking sick and tired of it. Maybe I could front love, maybe I could buy it. Maybe I get fucked up. Next time I could say something. Why it's gotta be like this? Why it's gotta be that way? Put it inside. Feel so rise up, banging on that loud.